Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the world's best investing podcast. I believe Duolingo is something like Amazon 20 years ago or something like that. Amazon has been game changing the commerce. And I believe that Duolingo is basically going to take the whole education market. This market is worth three, sorry, $10 trillion worldwide. And Duolingo is simply positioned to take all of it. I believe that incumbents won't be able to do much about this. I also believe that over the long term, institutions will still exist where people will go in person, but ultimately the operating system for that will be Duolingo, increasingly across ages, demographics, everything. Why? Just because when you have a data set that's rich in signals in terms of how do we make people learn more and better, if you feed that into AI models as they get exponentially better, which they are doubling in capacity every six months, eventually you just have an AI teacher that doesn't have to sleep, eat or rest and humans just can't compete with this machine. Why do I believe Duolingo is going to be the provider of this AI teacher? Essentially, it's just extraordinarily obsessed with the end customer. It's, in my view, one of the best run companies on earth. The proof for that, I could talk about this for hours, as you guys know, but the ultimate proof for why, in my opinion, Duolingo is such extraordinarily well managed is that free cash flow per share is rising even faster than in Himtus and Palantir's case. You guys know that I went along AMD at $4.2, Tesla at 13, Palantir at seven, Spotify at $97.50, Hims at $15. Today, it's actually trading above 50, even after multiple implosions of the stock price. Why are all these companies up big time? Just because free cash flow per share has gone up, they're well managed, they are obsessed with the end customer, and they do things better than competitors to the extent that they don't actually have real competitors. So with Duolingo, what you see is mouse and DAOs, monthly active users and daily active users, growing exponentially. And that process is actually accelerating. There's no one else on planet Earth that has such a rapidly growing education platform. And the reason is that these guys are harnessing AI. And what they do is because they grow faster than anyone else and they have more data than anyone else, they're able to plug that data into AI models. And therefore, the whole company, the whole value creation process of the company just gets faster and more efficient. It gets exponentially faster and more efficient. If you think about it, and this is true for many platforms worldwide that, that actually have outperformed in the stock market already, and I believe are only just getting started, say Netflix, for example. <clears throat> What's true of these companies is that all they do is play with atoms to delight customers more for less uh, dollars spent on behalf of customers and at lower cost for the company in question. Let me explain. Well, Duolingo, all it is, is you're just looking at a screen and the screen, whatever the screen is feeding you, it's designed to keep you engaged, learn, come back every single time. So make it addictive, have you hooked on this process in order to ultimately maximize your outcomes as a student per dollar spent. If you think about that on a first principles basis, all that is doing is throwing pictures, text and video at you. And obviously cool features that keep you engaged. Now, what part of that can't AI do exponentially better than any human could or any collection of humans? Well, the answer is none. AI is basically, it's actually happening now. If you review my latest uh, quarterly Duolingo update, which by the way, all my thesis, all my convictions, I update quarterly. And I've been doing this for years with Palantir, Spotify, AMD, Tesla, etc., cetera, HIMSS as well. So that's amazing world-class education material, material and it's for free. The link is in the bio in my YouTube profile. You should go check it out. Anyways, if you check out my latest Duolingo update, what you will see is that we have a sudden uptick in user growth. And if you dig deep into the fundamentals, what's happening is that these guys, as I said initially, they were just a language learning app. But the thing is that actually they had to make their courses manually. And so they would... They would basically, if you were based somewhere in Asia, they could teach you Spanish or English, but they wouldn't really teach you how to go from one Asian language to another or one African lang language to another. So the density of the courses, you know, one language to another were actually relatively low. And this is because in terms of costs, it simply wasn't feasible because these guys, Duolingo, they had to make the courses manually. Now with AI, that has actually changed. And now they have, they connect more languages, which 
previously wouldn't make sense economically. And now it does because AI is making the courses for them. And if you go and uh, review my update or even review the quarterly conference called Transcript yourself, you will see that Duolingo CEO Luis Von Ann says that AI is basically accelerating the pace at which they do stuff exponentially. It's happening right now. So the growth of Duolingo has been the result of, as I was saying, getting very obsessed with customers, but then ultimately delivering more value. And this is true of, say, a company like Spotify. CEO uh, Daniel Ek has said many times that whenever they invest in the product and they do it according to their processes, so ultimately optimizing for user lifetime value, eventually the platform grows. And then eventually all those free users turn into paid users. So it really is about with these platforms, it comes down, and this is true generally with any other business, but it's, it's so mathematical in this kind of platform. It's very true that whenever you deliver more value per dollar spent, the platform simply grows. Our Duolingo is extraordinary at marketing. And many of you guys will actually be familiar with the owl and all of that. I think that actually the owl pretended to die uh, a month ago or something like that, which I thought was very funny. But anyways, the point is that whenever these guys improve the product, user growth accelerates tremendously. The uptick in user growth that we've seen over the past few quarters, in my view, comes down to AI accelerating the value creation process of this company. Now, as happened with Amazon, people thought, you know, Amazon was a silly bookshop. Maybe not silly, but it was a bookshop. They thought Spotify was a music app. They thought Uber was just something where you press a button and you jump into a car. All these platforms have exponentiated their operating leverage over time, made it increasingly impossible for competitors to come into the market and take share by one, staying absolutely laser focused on delighting customers to deploying more verticals over time. Because every vertical that gets deployed is additional revenue. It ultimately increases user lifetime value, and it doesn't actually increase costs at any point of the value creation process, maybe marginally so. So ultimately what you get is that revenue goes up and that just translates into exponentially more free cash flow per share. The best example of that is Spotify. Over the past few years, Spotify's free cash flow per share is I actually have to go this way. It's gone like this. And then all of a sudden up exponentially, this is the blueprint. And so the thing with Duolingo is it's expensive. Uh, it's not a cheap stock. And what the market is starting to price in now is exponential growth. It's starting to price in what I call, uh, it's starting to price in the fact that, uh, that Duolingo is what I call a singularity scaler. So these are companies and the two prime examples in my view are Palantir and Duolingo. These are companies that I believe are going to exponentiate their earning power in tandem with the evolution of AI models, because there is no friction to their operations, essentially. So one example is the friction in Palantir's operations traditionally have been in, you have to send the FDEs, forward deployed engineers to the facilities of a company and then have them work through the issues and install the software. At the beginning, this is less true over time. At the beginning, it was clunky. And so the installation costs were high, but now that Palantir is developing AI FDEs, all of that process just gets compressed to zero. It's, it's trending in a direction in which it's going to be immediate. It's going to cost zero dollars. And so the time to value for customers is just compressing every single quarter. And what happens is that, of course, digital twins are essentially the foundation of capitalism. Capitalism now is about training AI models to automate stuff and do so in a way that others can't replicate. So have the best AI model. You need data for that. You need a digital twin. And so it's essentially Palantir continues to productize its offerings. It's, it's growing exponentially, and that's what the market is pricing in now. The conversation about why is Palantir so expensive, it's a bubble, et cetera. Most of the participants of these discussions come from the angle of, we don't understand what a singularity scalar is. We don't understand the importance of data of an infrastructure that allows you to harness it. And then we don't understand what Palantir is doing to essentially accelerate not only its customers' results, but those of itself. And that's because it's just uh, Palantir is scaling as the AI models continue to get better in tandem. Do I believe, <clears throat> excuse me, do I believe there's an end to the scaling of AI models? There may be, but for now we're not seeing it. And so these two investments are asymmetric. And this is true for a number of my other AI plays in that, you know, Duolingo has a certain amount of daily active users now, 
I don't see why over the long term they couldn't get to say one or two or three billion DAOs, something like that. That doesn't actually require AI. They would get there eventually. But AI is an accelerant of the thesis. And it's the same thing with Palantir. Data is going to be very important, whether what we call now AI takes off or not, because essentially what we need is more and more compute. And so Duolingo is a singularity scaler because there is no friction to its operations. It's just bring in more users, get more data in terms of what allows them to learn more and better and faster, and then plug that data into an AI model, build an AI teacher and just scale and make more money for less money spent in your operations and bring that down to the bottom line. Now, CEO Luis Vonan, in my opinion, is a very, very smart guy. And Duolingo is essentially a mirror image of his brain. This is true for all other extraordinary founder-led companies like Palantir, like Spotify, like Hims, etc. So now Duolingo has recently deployed a math, music, and chess vertical. Actually, these are three separate verticals just to be absolutely clear. What's interesting about the chess vertical is it was built by two guys with no technical expertise whatsoever, and it was built using AI. In a fraction of the time, it's taken them to make courses in the past. That little qualitative nugget there, if the rest isn't sufficient proof for the fact that indeed Duolingo is a singularity scaler, is additional proof that the nature of this business is changing. AI is gonna accelerate this business so much that I believe it's going to blow people's minds over the coming five years. My opinion is that actually this business may outgrow and, and I think the stock price is likely to outperform, for example, Hims's, palant, uh, Hims's uh, stock price. And that's because there is no friction in the operations. Hims has a physical component to the business, which I think also adds to the defensibility. But in Duolingo's case, I think there is no limit to how much they can accelerate this process. Like, Right now, it's you know it took these two guys to make the chess course some time above zero to make. But hypothetically, we could be talking about a future in which in 6, 10, 12, 16 months, we just snap our fingers and we have a new course that delights everyone. And so, of course, this business currently as the result of teaching some languages, a bit of math, music, and chess right now. These verticals are smaller. But as we approach that future in which we snap the fingers and we have you know, verticals instantaneously deployed and this vast user base using it, I believe this thing just takes the whole education market. There is no limit and they can do this. You know, we, it would be natural to think that maybe it would take 10, 15 years for them to do that. And I'm obviously, that would be a success. Like there is no guarantee in investing. And so if that happens in 10 to 15 years, that would be extraordinary. But just think about what AI is now, what could it be in five years? And so in five years, you could be talking about, say, Duolingo in three months' time, scaling across 25% of the educational system. There is absolutely no reason for which they couldn't do that if they have the data to do so. There is absolutely no limit. So this is my next big bet. I've made a lot of money already with my Palantir, Hims, Spotify bets, AMD and Tesla uh, a decade ago, still holding. I believe AMD is going to be my first 100x. It's speculative though, because it could be Tesla or it could be Palantir. Palantir is up 20X now um, for me, and it could actually be Palantir because it is a singularity scaler. I know it's a strange concept. I know it's abstract. Uh, it's, I don't think the human mind is made to understand this, but look, it's, I mean, if you just draw a line of the performance of AI models and you understand that a company's operations are such that the earning power evolves in tandem with this scaling law. It just, you know, it is what it is. So we'll see. We'll see. But I think that this pick is going to make me a lot of money. Uh, but anyways, guys, thank you so much for joining me. None of this is financial advice. It's just for educational, informational purposes only. Educational specifically. I'm delighted to see the evolution of many of you guys. You text me often. We meet sometimes when I go out, uh, when I leave the house, when I'm not doing deep dives and I'm traveling or whatever, and you guys are super kind and I appreciate it. It's awesome to see the impact that my content has had on your thinking, your ability to think, which, you know, I continue to improve mine every day. And it's just amazing to see that you guys are tagging along with me in this journey, especially so for the customers of my course. It's so, so cool. Many of them have actually been uh, in the community now for more than a year, which is crazy. I started this business back in last November. So not, not the recent November, the one from last year. And so we'll be two years old 
this November. And I think it's it's just so cool to see the evolution of people once they finish the course, once they start writing deep dives. It's just amazing. I think that I honestly think that over the next five to ten years, we're going to build a probably the world's best community of independent critical thinkers, and that's going to show in the returns of the I believe, and that's going to show in the returns that these people get that the members of the community get over the next decade. I think we're living through an unprecedented time in human history in which very counterintuitive dynamics are taking hold of the world. Singularity scale is being the principal one. And I believe that things are going to get very strange for most of the population over the next five to 10 years, but it's going to be absolutely prime harvesting time for deep divers. I believe that what we're doing here really positions every single one of us to outperform in the world in, you know, in a time in history in which judgment is the main thing. Previously in the past, there were other things that you could do to get ahead in life. Like, you know, be strong, be fast, etc. stuff like that. Now it's essentially, unless you're a football player, which is cool, tennis player, I mean, even tennis players need to have a brain, right? But right now, the world is setting up for a situation in which if you have prime judgment, if you have top 0.1% judgment, there is no limit to how much wealth you can create over the next five to 10 years. And I believe that's going to be true going forward until we hit post-capitalism. Just because you're going to be able to take one decision and we're going to have this whole chain of machines doing stuff for us. So guys, very exciting. I know many of you guys are on holiday. I myself just came back from a trip. Uh, it was amazing. Southern France, very cool. And, you know, now we'll be doing uh, less work in terms of intensity, but we'll be picking it back up soon when the summer is over. And we have the Snapchat deep dive coming up. Uh, I'll be dropping that in the newsletter over the coming week. And I think it's really interesting. I think people are sleeping on this company and I think it's, you know, it's worth a look and it's going to be worth tracking. So guys, thank you very much for joining me. As always, if you enjoyed this update, could you please share this with one friend whom you think will like it? These deep dives and updates are for free. So the only way this grows is with your help. So thank you very much in, ad in advance for joining me. Take care and see you next time.